Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Raven Rundown. I am so glad that you are joining us. Raven Rundown is back and better than ever. I could not be more happy to be beside Tyler Arego. Tyler, it's so great to be back with you. Okay, I'm really happy to have this program fired back up again after a little bit of a hiatus. Um, always good to be back in the studio with you, my friend. And we're very lucky today to have two awesome guests to kick off the show as it returns. Absolutely. We have both Caitlin Sweeney and Brianna Sweeney joining us on today's show. Our first guests of Raven Rundown, we're so excited to have them. They have had a tremendous run here at Franklin Pierce on the women's lacrosse team. Tyler, it's been special for these two players. It's really fun to have you guys, and thanks for joining us. It's a real blast to have you guys here, and um, we'll kind of just hop right into it. Um, pretty big win, personally, for the team as a whole. 15-12 to 12 over St. Michael's, and... Brianna, you with seven points in that game, two goals and five assists, you know, put the team on your back there. Um, got your 200th point, um, assisting on Anna Wilbert, who also had a pretty big game, yeah. and a fellow senior there. She picked up her 100th career point. So talk about what it's been like for, for you and your senior classmates kind of on this final ride here going through the season. Uh, yeah, I think just like statistically I had a strong game, but I mean, when you look on the field, uh, there's a lot more being done other than what's statistically statistically written down. So I think that um, our senior class is definitely strong. We've been a strong asset to the team since our freshman year. And um, I think it was just really awesome to have me and Anna get our, like hit our milestones together. Um, but we definitely have some strong players everywhere in the field. Our captain defender, Megan Schaefer, has been a strong asset to the team. She actually played attack last year when we needed some help. So that was awesome. and. I just like I'm really sad to say goodbye to this team, but I'm glad I'm doing it with our class. And Kate, for you, you hit that milestone of 200 points uh, against SNU a couple weeks ago, and it seems fitting that at the end of it all, you two as sisters would rank in the top four, top five, and in, in points scored for this program. Sort of talk about what your experience has been like, and I know you highlighted on on my show earlier today, but sort of kind of run us through what it's been like to go go through here with your sister at Franklin Pierce? It's been fun. Uh, every year it's definitely been different. But, um, I mean, working with different people on offense and, and defense, but, um, I mean, we've had fun out there and uh, we've left our mark, so. Cam, I definitely would have to agree with that. They certainly have left their mark. Kate, you're currently second all time and rising in points and Bree, you're only, uh, not too far behind, 202 career points and counting. That's good for fourth right now. So yeah. certainly leaving your staple here. And um, it's been pretty impressive as a whole what you guys have been able to do to turn this program around completely. Without question, Tyler, they've been so fun to watch. It's been so great to have seen you guys the past three years that I've been here on the women's lacrosse team. You guys have been phenomenal on the field. So happy for you. But you know what? There's still time left in the season. Yeah. There's still some games left on the schedule. You get a big NE10 win yesterday. I think that gave your team some momentum. What's that do for you guys moving forward now to conclude this season? Uh, so going into Saturday, it's our senior game. So, I mean, it's a special day to celebrate, like, what we've done, like, what our senior class has done for the program. But I think it's also a really good time to keep the ball rolling and kind of go into the end of the season stronger than we started it. Um, I think our team is stronger than – any team in the any 10 I think any game, any game can go any way. So I think just having that mindset, knowing that, you know, playoffs is possible, you know, we just got to get into it and play our best, which I don't think we've seen yet, honestly. I know, Kate, earlier you had mentioned that you didn't like how your team started this year. And when I asked you how you wanted to finish things off, you didn't say necessarily about making the playoffs, but just sort of wanting to finish better than you started. You've only got about four games left. Um, how do you, what's, what's the game plan here as you guys try and attack these final four games with the hopes of making the playoffs still a possibility? Well, AIC definitely has to be a win. And then after that we have nationally ranked Assumption, Merrimack, and Pace. So those are huge games. So we finish out the season as we want to, like winning all those games if we can have a good place in playoffs and hopefully perform in playoffs and be able to go far. And I know last year um, it was kind of a tough draw having to play LeMoyne in the regular season finale. Um, obviously that game, 
very forgettable and then having then to travel to Lemoyne for the opening playoff game and dropping that decision. Don't want to look too, too far ahead, three and six in conference right now, but with those four games left all against any 10 opponents, one would have to figure three out of four gets you in, winning all four most certainly. What do you girls hope to accomplish if your team can make it to the playoffs? Obviously, it's anyone's game. Uh, what are you guys looking to accomplish as you wrap things up? Um, I, I would say just playing strong. Uh, I know last year when we made the playoffs, I mean, we did have to play uh, number one or two in the nation. But, you know, it's a process. And I think for people who have been on the team, so uh, either the juniors or the seniors, uh, it was just nice to be there, you know, because we can only go further from there. You know, it was our first step to get there. And now we just got to get further and further in. But I think right now our goal for this season particularly is just to, you know, be at our best and play our best and show the conference what we can do and show ourselves what we really are made of because, you know, I think we have potential that hasn't been revealed yet. So I think that just at least getting two really good wins in would be, you know, I'd be happy with that. You talk about that potential and a lot of that's been seen in the young talent on your team. And I have to think that that's been a lot because of the leadership that you guys have definitely shown on the team. So kind of talk about how you guys have really stepped up as leaders this season for the younger members of your team. Uh, yeah, the freshmen definitely have played a huge role in our season so far. I think a lot of them, like, coming in, they didn't really need. Like, uh, our freshman, Zoe, I feel like she didn't even need leadership. Like, she's one of the people who just come out and work hard every single day. And, like, that's the people we want on our team, you know? Like, and I feel like more people like that are just coming in and the future is looking pretty good. And, to so you obviously feel that you've left the program moving in a positive direction. How do you foresee it unfolding in the seasons to come with that young talent? How do you see them playing out next year? Do you see a playoff run in the future? Do you see them going deeper than this year, next year? Is there any idea of how this program is going to evolve in the seasons to come based on what you guys have seen? Uh, I mean... Me and Bree personally have like worked a lot of the clinics and uh, met a lot of the recruits, played with them over the summer and like seen what they could do and uh, I feel like it's a lot of good things coming our way and um, I mean a lot of them have known each other now for a year or two and they're coming in as friends and that only helps the situation, you know, so um, I don't know, I guess we'll see but I yeah. think it looks great. Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, it's evident that we already have younger people on the team who are natural leaders on the field. You know, uh, they don't necessarily have the name of captain, but you know, you don't need to have that at all to be a leader. And we've seen that in statistically, but we also have, there's freshmen on our team that we've relied heavily on that, you know, not, aren't necessarily in the stat book, but I think that they've played huge roles. One of our midfielders, number 17, Maddie Hassan, she's a consistent player. She's reliable on offense, defense, and transition. And I mean, we have that solid group of girls that coming in next year, I already know that we have talent coming in. And, you know, I think with our coach especially, she's done a great job recruiting and changing the culture here that I think that we're only going up our program. Well, we look forward to seeing what the program does yeah, in years to come. You've obviously left them in a great spot. I would agree with that, Cam, no doubt about it. Tyler, I have to raise this point, you know. You played hockey in high school. You know, four years go by. You've given so much to a sport that you love. Yeah. At the end of the at, excuse me, at the end of the day, you kind of look back and say, "All right, what are my biggest takeaways from my experience here?" Is there a biggest takeaway for you guys from your past four years playing lacrosse here at Pierce? Oh wow, um, I think honestly, like the biggest takeaway for me is just, I mean, being part of a team is just something that you know, it's just one once in a lifetime experience. You know, four years goes by so quickly, and especially now it's like dwindling down. You know, we're so nostalgic, like all the seniors were talking about, wow, like, remember this, remember that. Yep. And I don't know, I don't think I can pinpoint one exact event that was life-changing for me. I think it, Franklin Pierce as a whole has changed me entirely, and being on the team with such amazing people has just been an awesome experience. Um, we're definitely fortunate to have such an amazing coach, too. I think that we're really super lucky. She's, uh, you know, shared a lot of her passion with us, and I think that really reflects on the players on the team. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think the biggest thing I've taken away from lacrosse these last four years, especially, is just 
working hard to achieve your goals. I mean, individually or as a team, it's just, like, it's not just the big things that everyone thinks it is, like, oh, you got to practice catching and throwing and stuff like that. It's, it's everything, you know, like, being on time and, like, working hard on and off the field and stuff like that. I think it translates into the real world and, like, business-wise, whatever like, career you're going into, it's just, like, you have to work hard for everything you want. Absolutely, and we'll wrap up with this closing question. The four years end, it's sad, but at the same time, you have so much to look forward to. And obviously, there's a lot that happens after college, Tyler. Uh, that is an understatement, I think. <laughs> I know for both yeah. of you personally, um, different majors, so kind of kind of going in different career paths, so to speak. And I know from talking with Kate earlier, what she kind of hopes to accomplished so Bree um, with your you know career field of elementary education what are you hoping to accomplish in your time uh, in the future after five years? Um, so right now I just have to finish up for my special ed uh, student teaching but you know my ultimate goal I'm just really passionate about like t teaching in general uh, especially being just an advocate for people with disabilities I think that's where like my ultimate passion lies so you know I'm pretty open to anything uh, I don't know, I just want to see where the road takes me. I'm not too focused on the money aspect or location. Pretty open to where life takes me. Not all about the money, right? And yeah. Kate, I know for you, talking about it, um, you're hoping to, in sports and rec, either work in lacrosse as a coach or potentially work, you know, in some other sort of field in athletics. Yeah, I, uh, I would love to coach at, at the college level. Um, but I also just like the whole athletic administration part of Athletics College also. Um, I've worked here with Matt Janik for the last few years, and uh, I've definitely nope, enjoyed that. And um, But yeah, coaching's definitely a goal of mine. So. Plenty of aspirations, it seems, for yeah. them post-peers. Post Absolutely. We're so happy for what you guys have accomplished with the LAX program and what we know you'll accomplish post-graduation. Absolutely. So thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thanks. It's been so fun, Tyler, to have both of them on the set. Absolutely. Thank and you both. We will move on to sports after the break, but special shout out to Brianna Sweeney and Caitlin Sweeney for joining us on the first episode of Raven Rundown as our special guest. Guys, it's been fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Raven Rundown, everybody. I'm Cam Gonzalez. He's Tyler Orego. We're so glad you are joining us this evening. We just had the Sweeney sisters on. What company they were on the set, Tyler? Oh, just phenomenal, really. Just uh, in terms of athletes and people, I mean, I really can safely say I haven't met, you know, people as good as the Sweeney sisters here in my brief time at Franklin Pierce. Just, just phenomenal people, really. Talk about starting it off right with special guests on the show. Doesn't get much more special than that, I don't think, so. Sure doesn't. Very lucky to have them on, though, for sure. However, we do have some special news from Raven Sports. And let's dive right into those. Let's get it. We're, we'll start out with women's track and field. Some stats there. Over the weekend, they were able to notch a trio of wins at Coast Guard Academy Invitational. The women did really well here, Tyler. They had three event wins, a total of six top three finishes. I mean... They did extremely well, and some players that stood out in this one, Emily Quinn led the way for the Ravens. She had a school record with the hammer throw, so a big accolade there for Emily Quinn. Among others, sophomore Olivia Mabbitt got up and over the bar at 154 meters to win the, I believe, high jump. You are correct. Yep. Big win there for her. So we saw some underclassmen really doing some good things in this track and field competition however there were so many contributions here i think it's time that we now take a look deeper at women's track and field tyler yeah cam certainly i mean one event that particularly sort of sticks out to me is the uh four by 400 meter relay um some really you know notable names uh in that particularly um graduate student nicole galuski who um, i actually just wrote a feature for for our athletics department and nicole i've come to know 
um, just a tremendous um, young woman. She's faced a lot of adversity, um, both on and off the track. Um, so it's really awesome to see her succeed at the 4x400 meter relay. Um, a very young uh, quart, uh, quartet as well with um, two freshmen, or rather uh, a freshman and two sophomores, and then Galuski, the graduate student. But um, turning in a time of 418 um, is pretty solid considering perhaps maybe a level of inexperience there with the freshmen, um, with the underclassmen along with the upperclassmen. But really good to see, and no better person really um, than to have Galuski on that squad of, of four by, for 4x4. Four by four. I mean, she's just so experienced um, as a multi uh, event competitor here at Pierce and um, really good to have her there kind of leading the way for those younger runners. Yeah, really no better leader to have there. I mean, she has really put this program in the right direction. She really appears to have helped out the younger class and we've seen it. I mean, we highlighted sophomore Olivia Mabbitt, who I began with talking about and then we jumped into that 4x4 four four meter relay, which she was a part of. We brought up Evelyn Rodriguez, who is a freshman, and then you got sophomore Diagenique White, who turned in a winning time of 4.18.63. So all of them together got 4.18.63, and that's a great time. They were able to win. So all good things happening there. Moving on with better news for the track team, Katie Comstock placed second for eight points with a heave of 11.51 meters. Comstock, she was big at this Invitational, and this wasn't the only area where she excelled. She was also one of two throwers for Franklin Pierce to score in the Javelin as well, where she posted a mark of 31.70 meters, and she finished sixth. But Comstock is able to do it in two sports, well, excuse me, two different competitions, and still be effective for this team. I mean, you can't ask for more. No, Cam, you really can't. And I mean, I think we've seen sort of as we break down um, the Coast Guard Academy Invitational, we've seen a variety of different contributors for the Ravens, whether it be senior Emily Quinn or freshmen like uh, Alyssa Harris and, and uh, Evelyn Rodriguez. I mean, really the contributions from everyone has been there. And that's so important when you have, you know, sport like track where there's just so many different events, so many different athletes competing in these events. You have a you know, an athlete like Katie Comstock, who, you know, is a record holder here in various events like the shot put, uh, both indoor and outdoor. Um, you know, she's proven to have a lot of success in this, in this particular event um, with the throwing event, particularly the shot, the shot put, which, as I just said, she is a, a school record holder for. So when you are able to boast that much talent, um, it can be really daunting for other teams as you show up to these meets with record holders like Galuski and Comstock and even Emily Quinn. Uh, the senior out of West Bridgewater, Massachusetts, shout out to shout Southern out Mass there. Um, you know, another record holder um, in her. So just a lot of a lot of talent on this on this women's track and field team. There sure is. Looks like they're going in a positive direction, Certainly. especially after getting this victory at the Coast Guard Academy Invitational. Three wins there for the track team. They're going to be moving in the right direction. Let's move on, Tyler. We have men's tennis. Men's tennis, they had a chance to go above 500. Unfortunately, Tyler, they lost on the road. They fell to Southern New Hampshire University, and we know SNU can be tough, but they lost nine sets to none. Right. They were essentially shut out, and with the loss, Franklin Pierce falls to 9-10. and 10. So they are now on the hunch to try to get back to 500 and try to overcome that 500 to get a winning record. But for now, they're just trying to get back to 500, Tyler. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a really good spring, though, nonetheless. The record is a little bit deceiving for the men's tennis team, but um, they, are, they got off to a really good start. They, they won their first two matches of the spring season um, against St. Michael's and St. Anselm. They got off to a good start. They were actually pretty solid in conference, too. Uh, I believe they had a 3-1 and one mark before heading into spring break. They're now at 4-4 four and four in any 10 play um, as they've sort of began to hit that tougher part of their schedule playing against um, some of the conference's better opponents, such as SNU, who is... Um, you know, as indicated by the result of the match, a really good program there. Yeah. But for the Ravens, a bit of a, a bit of a renaissance, really, this season. For them, they haven't made the playoffs since 2005. It's been a really long time coming for yes. the guys, but they got a lot of good talent on this team, um, particularly with um, Roberto Chong leading the way. I mean, he's just um, been fantastic as a, as a freshman. Great and, talent um, there. 
some junior talent as well in um, Sonny Bazaza and um, you know Matt Toombs is a sophomore as well. Yeah. So there certainly is something working there for Franklin Pierce, and sure the record not really indicating that at nine and ten, but playoffs are still a possibility for the Burrs. They just need to strengthen things up, find their groove again, because they did get off to a really good start this year. Yeah, they're not out of the question with playoffs. It'll be interesting to see how they fare moving forward. You mentioned Matthew Toombs, James Bazaza. I mean, they put up the best competition in the doubles match on, yeah. excuse me, what day was it on? I don't have the exact date, but it was over the weekend. And they really put together the best competition. They had an 8-4 set, so it was kind of close there. Still a big margin, but... I guess that kind of shows just what kind of day it was for Franklin Pierce on the court. Just not their day, and SNHU essentially ran away with it. But that's not going to put an end to this campaign for Franklin Pierce tennis because they're going to return to the court on Thursday, April 12th, when, <coughs> when they travel to excuse me, Holy Cross in what will be a non-conference match. So I guess all they can do now, right, Tyler, is look ahead to that match, and hopefully they can get it back. Yeah, they've got... Three more matches left on this season. Two of them, though, are non-conference games, uh, Holy Cross on Thursday, and then they wrap up things on Sunday the 15th against Post here at home. They do travel on the road for Assumption. That will be their last conference game of the season, and hopefully with a win, they'll at least be able to finish 5-4 and four in the NE10 and potentially sneak into a playoff spot. But with two out-of-conference games, an opportunity also to finish 500, um, they can... Yeah, total of 12 wins all together. Yeah. Finish 12 and 10, potentially 5 and 4 in conference. So that would be pretty huge for this program Definitely. as they try and turn the wheels forward here and make a push to the playoffs because that's something they have not experienced in a long yeah. time here for men's tennis. Yeah, I mean, even if they don't make the playoffs, if they can go on a little run, win a couple games, and really end the season on a positive note going into the next, I think that's hopefully what the tennis team will be able to do. And we wish them the best and hope that they will do so. So we will move on from men's tennis, and we'll get into some Ravens baseball. Pretty hot topic here. The Ravens coming off a thrilling victory yesterday, Tyler. You want to talk about that one a little bit? Well, Cam, for, well, for baseball, um, they, they had a really good weekend, that's for sure, against AIC. Um, really been rolling uh, coming into yesterday's game against SNU. Um, winners of six in a row, where uh, unfortunately came to an end last night uh, in extra innings, but thrilling baseball game to be at. Uh, it was a terrific atmosphere at the field. Uh, athletes backing athletes night, so a good crowd was on hand to witness that. Always at a big event, you know, Cam, when um, Snoop comes into town, it's one that you really circle the calendar on. You want to be at the field for that game. Ravens as well looking to make amends for that 9-3 loss that they had suffered against Snoop earlier, but going back to that, um, since that Snoop game, the first one at least, they ran on to rattle off six straight wins. They swept Merrimack in a triple header. They crushed St. Anselm's 12-0 and then had a really strong weekend against American International, winning both those games 4-2 and 11-0. Um, the Ravens pitching staff was phenomenal last night against Snoo. It's been phenomenal, really, of late. Excuse me, you know, 24 combined strikeouts in that series against AIC. Zach Hart oh. has been wheeling and dealing on the mound. Johnny sure Mandola has. started last night against Snoo. He was phenomenal as well. Pitching staff was under some questions earlier in the season, Cam, but they've really righted the ship, and now the big question mark falls on the Ravens' fielding, which has just been pretty porous so far this year. Yeah, let's hope they can clean up the mess that has been happening there in the field. I mean, we know those mistakes happen, and we know they'll clean them up, but let's talk about this pitching a little bit. Yes. You look at a guy like Johnny Amendola, named any 10 pitcher of the week. He has these back-to-back -back thrilling performances. I mean, this is a guy that I really feel is going in the right direction. And Zach Hart, I mean, I knew this guy coming in the season was going to be a guy that you need to you needed to have an eye on. I mean, you know, can pound that fastball. Yes. But, you know, I listened to a Media Monday video, Matt Janik, and what Hart said is this season he's really been trying to focus on his off-speed stuff. Yep. You know, he talked about how he'd been trying to overpower batters and blow it by them. But instead, this season he's been really focusing on his mechanics with – his off-speed pitches, and, you know, the success speaks for itself thus far, Tyler. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was present there for that interview, and Zach certainly has definitely made adjustments to his game, and it's been evident. He's just been on a 
absolute tear, 33 strikeouts and just two earned runs through his last 29 innings pitched. I mean, that's just absolutely phenomenal. He's in the top 10, top five in the NE10 for strikeouts. Um, and it's shown. I mean, there are some pitchers who have that ability to sort of overpower hitters with just, you know, powerfully yep. thrown balls. But, you know, Zach has been able to adjust, make changes in his preparation and his pitching, and it's paid off. I mean, the success has been evident. He's been one of their most reliable starting pitchers along with John Amendola, and um, really the starting pitching rotation has been quite solid for the, for the Ravens. It's yeah. really just been a matter of can the fielding and the defense right. shore them up and, and help them out, and that really wasn't the case towards the latter part of that snoo game last night at Pops Field. So that's good to see, Tyler, moving forward. The takeaway from last night, you noticed that that fielding had improved last night? There were, there were moments for sure. Adam Chase had a few really nice plays there in right field. Uh, with a pair of sliding catches, but just some errors at key points of the game. Yeah. Uh, um, Jack Duffy slipping in uh, center field, allowing mm -hmm. a triple to be, uh, you know, a triple there, um, which got the Ravens in a bit of a jam. Fortunately, some poor base running by Snoo got them out of it, just tied. But those are the errors that can sort of add up, and, and eventually it did as an extras. Snoo was able to get the go-ahead run off a bit of a, not, not really an error, but sort of some confusion between right yeah. and center field and allowed the runner to score in at home plate. But the Ravens fielding, it's been under question for a while. They had some issues the last time they played Snoo with four committed errors through the first four or five innings of the game. Obviously, that doesn't do your starting pitcher any good in terms of a confidence level when the defense behind him isn't necessarily shoring him up. But um, last night, I really liked what I saw from the Ravens pitching staff, top to bottom. Johnny Amendola came in and pitched a really good game, went really deep, and then Adam Goss did his job. Ryan Cavelli came in for a few innings, did really well. Anthony Matarazzo stepped in, performed well, had to leave with a bit of an injury, and then Derek Duffy came in and looked really good as well off the mound. I mean, the Ravens got a solid pitching performance, but yeah, Snoo, they play him tough. They do. Snoo is always a tough battle, but, you know, Franklin Pierce owned up to it yesterday, and just to touch on the error aspect, Errors are going to happen. Absolutely. They're a part of the game. They are going to happen. But, you know, with Franklin Pierce can really buckle down in critical moments, and when they need to make a play in defense, they make it, this team, the sky's the limit. And if these pitch it, pitchers continue to go deep in games and this lineup stays hot, <laughs> this team is going to make a deep any 10 playoff run, Tyler. They certainly I'm have, excited for what's to come. I am too, Cam. They certainly do have a blueprint to build off, a, uh, build off and, and into a deep run coming into this late portion of spring, and um, it's just going to be a matter of just fine-tuning things, cleaning things up there in the field. Absolutely. And we look forward to seeing what the baseball team does moving forward. A couple of topics left here, Tyler, that include women's lacrosse and men's lacrosse. And we'll touch on women's lacrosse briefly because, you know, we had Kate and Bree on. Yep. Kind of talked about the recent, um, you know, games for women's lacrosse and recent news. But we'll touch it on it a little bit because it's important to. So women's lacrosse is coming off a thrilling 15 to 12 victory just yesterday talked about Bree Sweeney notching that 200th goal just absolutely awesome to see from her Caitlin got hers just a week back yep great to see that from them but let's shift the focus to these younger players and yes. we touched on it in our interview with them the young talent that they have has really shown potential oh certainly Cam and there's been a, been a handful of players you know Car Carolyn Moonsbury has really stepped up, and Zoe Totlin as well, um, two freshmen who have proven um, to be able to put the ball in the back of the net, which is crucial, um, especially with this, the Sweeney's leaving next year, yeah. you know, um, with 76 goals on the year, 46% of their team's total offense stats we have here were typed up before that game, but, you know, we make the adjustment, and um, of course. they're a big, they're, the Sweeney sisters are a big factor of this team's offense, so it's really encouraging to see there are some young players that have been able to step in and pick up sort of a secondary scoring role um, because the Ravens are going to need that next year when they won't have the luxury of two of the NE10's most le lethal scorers. But it's in other positions as well. I mean, you look at uh, Casey Butera in net. She's sort of split time this year with Madison Murray. There's been a bit of a carousel sort of going on between the two of them. But Murray, a senior as well, she'll be departing this year, and that's going to be a hole in net to fill in. Coach Lonergan has two goalies right now, both of them sophomores. So whether or yeah. not they're the answer, we might not see it just yet. Butera has gotten some 
minutes though, which is you know a good showcase for her. But whether or not they recruit another goalkeeper, we, we won't really know until next year. Um, yeah. But there, there's certainly a lot of great young talent on this Ravens team. They've got a great head coach at the helm sure of things. Do. And this is a program that's really, you know, done a complete 360. You know, um, I remember writing about the Sweeney sisters last spring and how they've sort of revitalized the program, you know, back-to-back -back winless seasons in the mid-2000s. And now, you know, just last year alone, making a playoff berth in the NE10, albeit a short one. Still remarkable for um, women's lacrosse. Sure is, Tyler, and we're looking forward to what we're going to see from them for the remainder of this season. And once they lose those seniors, how are they going to respond? Because <laughs> especially after that interview we had, they're definitely being left in the right direction. So good things to come for the women's lacrosse team. We're just about ready to wrap up here. But before we do, I think special recognition is needed to give Jack Carney, who recorded his 100th career point, for men's lacrosse, excuse me. Congratulations, Jack. Awesome achievement. We're so happy for you. And we look forward to touching on men's lacrosse in our next episode of Raven Rundown and other episodes to come. But for this one, that's all we have, ladies and gentlemen. Tyler, it's been a blast to get back behind the desk with you. I'm looking forward to many more great shows to come with the remainder of my time here at Franklin Pierce University. Tyler, looking forward to it. Absolutely, Cam. It's been a good start. Uh, we you know, couldn't have picked two better guests to lead things off with, and now we just have to keep the ball rolling here. And with the way the spring season has gone, there certainly will be plenty for us to talk about with both lacrosse teams, baseball, softball even. Um, a lot of good things happening in Ravens Athletics right now, and we'll be here to talk about it. Oh, we will, Tyler, and we will be sure to bring you guys the latest in our next episode. And stay tuned because we will definitely have another special guest for you. Be sure to tune in to our next episode of Raven Rundown. Thanks for joining us. For our cast and crew, I am Cam Gonzalves. I'm Tyler Rago. And this is Raven Rundown. Good night, everybody.